Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again with week 12 predictions this week. It's early in the morning. I'm quite tired, so I'm probably going to breeze through these a little quickly uh, as I try to return this kickoff for a touchdown, but I'm bad at Madden. We kick off tonight with this game, 8.20 p.m. It is the Houston Texans at 6-4 hosting the 6-4 Indianapolis Colts. I picked this game to be the one I record because I think it's going to be the best game of the bunch this weekend. This entire week, actually. And the Colts are 3-0 this season against AFC South opponents, which includes a game against these here Houston Texans. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I mean, the, the Colts are coming off a loss to the Miami Dolphins, and the Houston Texans are coming off a terrible loss to the Baltimore Ravens. But I don't predict either of these teams will play the way they did against those two squads. I feel like the Texans have a lot to play for in this game. They have the division lead, of course. The winner of this game will be first place in the AFC South with a grand shot to make the playoffs. And the Texans have the, uh, the MVP candidate, Deshaun Watson, at quarterback. So I just like the Texans a lot in this game. I'm going to pick them. And then we start off with Sunday at 1 p.m., the 2-8 and eight Giants visiting the 4-6 and six Bears. So, I wish I could get into how much I hate the New York Giants right now, but I really can't. Um, they are pretty pathetic. I hope that they can get Saquon Barkley going. Doesn't seem like it will be likely against Khalil Mack and that pretty good defensive front they've got there in Chicago. So, uh, only time will tell. Hopefully Daniel Jones keeps the turnovers out of his system and he continues to ball out eight touchdowns in the last two games it's pretty impressive numbers for a rookie quarterback but uh, I'm going with the Giants to get an upset win if Mitchell Trubisky plays it's not an upset if he does play upset alert wait a minute I meant if Mitchell Trubisky plays it's not an upset but if he doesn't play it is an upset that's what I meant okay Next up, the 2-8 and eight Dolphins visit the 4-6 and six Browns. So, the Browns are coming off the head-smashingly good victory against the Pittsburgh Steelers last Thursday night. And they need to start racking up wins. They have to streak, pretty much rip off every single game of this year with a win to make the playoffs. And they have a great shot to do so against the Dolphins. And, I mean, you look at the Dolphins, they're 2-8. and eight, But their two wins have come over the last two weeks. They are on a bigger win streak than the New York Giants. That is a sentence that just exited my mouth. I'm picking the Browns though. They have a wealth of talent. I think they'll be able to get the job done on Sunday. Next up, the 5-5 five five Steelers versus the 0-10 Bengals. I think this goes without saying. The Bengals probably have no shot. So the Steelers, for all intents and purposes, are my pick. Then the 3-7 Broncos versus the 7-3 Bills. You know, I just, no matter how the Broncos play through the first three quarters of this game, I still, if they have a 40 point lead in the third quarter, I'm still going to pick the Bills. They have shown me they have a propensity for losing games like absolute fools in just the most foolish of ways. So I have to pick the Buffalo Bills, and they are my pick. Next up, the Panthers at 5-5 five five versus the Saints at 8-2. The Saints have won three of the last four. Kyle Allen is sliding dramatically from where he started off early in the season. And I think Christian McCaffrey is pretty much out of every logical human being's MVP race, as he should be. And the Carolina Panthers are going to eat an L on Sunday. I like the New Orleans Saints. Then the 3-7 and seven Bucks take on the 3-7 and seven Falcons. The Falcons have five consecutive wins against Tampa Bay. They're coming off a big division win from last week. You know, I just, I like the Falcons. I like them in this game. Ever since they made those coaching changes, they have played better football. The defense has played a lot better. And, you know, this is a game-to-game -game league. And the Falcons, I think, are going to string some impressive wins together. They're they're out of the playoff race. We can safely assume at 3-7 and seven that they're pretty much done. But they have a lot to look forward to, you know, for next year, for possibly drafting the successor to Matt Ryan so there's a lot for Falcons fans to look forward to and uh, with that being said they are my pick 
Then the uh, six and four Raiders will take on the three and seven Jets. The Jets have the number one run defense in the NFL. Yeah. How the hell did that happen on such a bad team? All three of their wins have come against NFC East opponents. The Raiders are not in the NFC East, uh, and they are 6-4 and four looking to make a playoff run. And just based on the fact that they aren't in the NFC East, the Jets have no chance in this game. So they are my pick. Uh, my pick being the Oakland Raiders. I kind of fumbled the words there. Next, the 8-2 and two Seahawks will take on the 5-5 five and five Eagles. So the Eagles didn't show me a lot last week against New England. Uh, that game was more of what New England couldn't do rather than how good or what uh, <coughs> Philadelphia could do. So I obviously don't like them in this game. Uh, I, I, just, I can't discredit Russell Wilson and everything he's done this season, beating San Francisco in San Francisco in prime time, putting up incredible numbers all year. He is an MVP front runner, and he is my pick. So I'm going with Seattle. Next up, the three six and one Lions take on the one and nine Redskins. Lions have lost six of the last seven, and Washington has lost a lot of games out of ten. So, <laughs> you know, there's just nothing to look forward to as 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 a as a Redskins fan. I mean, the organization is in shambles. They can't figure out who they want to play at quarterback. They don't even know if they like their rookie quarterback. They keep saying he's not ready, but why the hell did you draft him? Why did you throw him in against the Giants in garbage time? I mean, there's just so much uncertainty in that organization. They can't keep a quarterback around. And, I mean, they should be... Every member of that front office should be fired for the way Kirk Cousins has played this season and the way their quarterbacks have produced. I mean, it's just astounding. But, uh, you know, I like the Lions. I can't see Dwayne Haskins doing anything of any real you know any real noteworthiness so I have to take Detroit in this game next the four and six Jags will take on the five and five Titans so the Titans have won four of the last five against Jacksonville but I do like Nick Foles being back I think he brings a better element to this offense being a veteran guy with experience and of course a Super Bowl start and victory under his belt which is one more than every other quarterback who will be in this game, which includes Gardner Minshew, Marcus Mariota, and Ryan Tannehill. So the Jags are my pick just based on Big Dick Nick alone. I feel like he gives them an edge. Then Sunday, oh, we're still on Sunday, obviously. Uh, it will be the Cowboys at 6-4 and four versus the Patriots at 9-1. and one. So the Cowboys have the number one total offense, and the Patriots have the number one total defense. And in that matchup against number one and number one, who does it normally go to? Everybody should know this just based on Super Bowls we've seen even as far back as the past decade. The number one total defense wins nine times out of ten. The Patriots are my pick. They're better coached. They have better players. They're a better football team. And they are the defending Super Bowl champions. There's just a lot to give credit to when you're talking about the New England Patriots and not so much when you're talking about the Cowboys who have the worst record of any team in the playoffs in the National Football Conference because every other team in the NFC that's in the playoffs has eight wins and then there's the Cowboys who are so pathetic that they only have six because they suck. So the Patriots are my pick. Then Sunday night football, it's the 8-2 Green Bay Packers versus the 9-1 San Francisco 49ers. So Aaron Rodgers... Is facing a team that is nine and one or better for the first time in his career. That's pretty crazy when you think about how long he's been in the league and some of the great teams there have been that he has faced. But uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers have more wins versus teams with winning records this year than any other team in football. They are my pick. I like Aaron Rodgers. Is I just there's. Something about Aaron Rodgers that I just love, that I can't discredit, that I know he will bring to the table on Sunday night. And it's just something that you can't coach. And it's it's an intangible that not most guys have. It's a Tom Brady quality. It's an Aaron Rodgers quality. It's a quality that outside of those two guys we haven't seen in a very long time. It's like a Peyton Manning-esque. You don't really know how to quantify it. 
but yet it's there and you know it and it kind of screws you over every time you play him because this guy's just so great he transcends you know what you're trying to do to him defensively and I mean I know the 49ers have a great defense and they are the division or the conference leading team for a reason and I'm not going to discredit them by saying they haven't played anybody good or anything like that uh, but this is really their first major major test and I know Seattle was a great game for them and if they had just hung on to some more footballs, you know, maybe that game swings a different way. But lo and behold, it does not. And we are where we are. But I like Green Bay a lot. I think their defense is going to make some key plays. Jimmy Garoppolo still hasn't sold me yet and his ability to lead this football team. So I like the Green Bay Packers. Then on Monday Night Football, it's the 8 and 2 Ravens versus the 6 and 4 Rams. The Rams need this win in a bad way to keep their playoff hopes alive. Yeah, we're saying that about the defending NFC champions. They need a win in November to keep their playoff hopes alive. That's insane. And Lamar Jackson has a 14-3 record in his first 17 starts. That is a kid that no matter what you throw at him defensively, you know, maybe maybe Lamar Jackson has that quality I was just speaking about with guys like Brady and Rodgers and Peyton Manning and those kinds of characters. Because it seems no matter what you throw at him, and I know he's a different type of player, but he can still overcome anything you throw at him. Realistically, you're sending corner safety blitzes, he can diagnose it. You're sending more than, you know, you're, you're overwhelming the box count, he can still overcome that. You double-team his number one receivers, he can overcome it. He's just a great football mind, a great quarterback, a guy that I thoroughly enjoy watching play the game. And the Rams, they have struggled. They have struggled a lot against teams they shouldn't struggle against, like Chicago. That game should have been a walk in the park for L.A., yet they made it difficult on themselves. How, I don't really know. Because, I mean, Mitchell Trubisky has a phantom hip pointer, <laughs> and they still couldn't barely get the job done. I just, I can't, I can't not pick the Ravens. They are my pick, and they are my pick in a big way. I feel like the Rams might shock the world a little bit by putting up 35 or more on LA. I don't think anybody might be expecting that. But at this point, what, what, I mean, what do you expect from this NFL this year? But either way, Ravens are my pick on Monday night. Teams on the buys are the Vikings, the Chargers, the Cardinals, and the Chiefs. So we'll see all of you next week if you're fans of those teams. And if you are fans of football, we will see you this weekend. Have fun watching the games. If you're going to any games, stay safe. Uh, drink responsibly. Don't get behind the wheel with a Cowboys fan in the car because, it, I mean, if it was me, I'd certainly try to run us off the road just so that person would no longer be alive. But I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for week 12, and I'll catch you guys next week for week 13.